Hello and welcome to Made Mail, where Prototype D helps you make your million dollar idea. We are here outside of the Shankman Center in the BIA Orleans. We're super excited. We're having a live showcase of art. We're doing one of our Imagine World showcases here today. We're really excited to explore what it was like, what the vibes are, what the feeling was, what the experience was. And uh, we have a group of some exciting individuals who are doing incredible things in the community. So what we'll do is we'll start off by doing some introductions. Just uh, you know, let our listeners know who you are, what you do, what your role is, who you work for, and then we'll continue to elaborate. So I'll go to my right. Hey, and uh, thanks for uh, for having me uh, on this uh, podcast. Very, uh, very exciting group of people to be talking with today. Uh, my name is Remco. I'm with Art Engine, an art and technology center here uh, in uh, downtown Ottawa, uh, part of the larger arts court expansion at the moment, where we'll be uh, uh, expanding into a, a larger, say, 3,000 square feet uh, presentation and production center at the end of this year, so we're incredibly excited about that. Hi Ottawa, it's Christina Devine, Cool Creche here with Made Mill, Prototype D, Dom La Soul, getting busy. Um, I'm here on behalf of House of Paint, um, Ottawa's largest urban arts festival. We have a lot of really exciting things coming up before the festival at the end of August, so stay tuned. Uh, this is Dom Laporte, a uh, local artist. Uh, I just want to thank uh, Comey and Made Mill and Prototype D for having me today. Um, yeah, I just uh, you can check my work around town. And if you want to check me out on Instagram too, it's at Dom La Soul. Okay, peace. De La Soul. <laughs> my name is uh, Comey Olaf. Uh, I'm a visual artist and uh, operator of the pod here, the Innovation Pod. I work for uh, Made Mill and Prototype D, and uh, we're just trying to make amazing things and uh, influence the community the best ways that we can. Fantastic. And today we actually had uh, a couple people here. Uh, we have Remco and Dom for the first time experience VR. So I, I'm curious to know what your first initial reaction or experience was going into that VR. I'm going to start with Dom. Uh, what was that experience like? um addicting uh yeah the first thing um it's really amazing uh being able to like draw in a 3d space um you kind of when you hear about virtual reality i'm like oh yeah i can kind of get a feeling about what it's uh what it's all about and stuff but you when you actually do it like for me with someone who 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 draws and paints for a living that's like that's an extremely attractive piece of technology mm -hmm. for me yeah. um i would definitely like to explore with that more and i can already see that comey has already a pretty good handle on it and he now dances with the technology <laughs> so yeah, um, in fact the first time i tried it, it seven hours i was in there yeah, yeah. i could <laughs> not leave you know yeah. i pulled off the goggles and it was like i had stepped out of like a vortex something had happened you know yeah. but yeah addictive is definitely the word for that though yeah and, you know, for myself, you know, working with Comey, I have had the great opportunity to, like, meet new artists in the community. And it's quite exquisite to see the capability and the outcome of a lot of these artists and what they're capable of doing. And, you know, you're obviously contributing to the mural that we have here inside of the pod. Mm -hmm. uh, so what was the difference from that you felt initially going from, you know, your painting on the on inside of the pod to now moving into the VR? Was there any initial, like, right away, like, this was crazy? Like, what was that like? Well, it's basically moving from my comfort zone to somewhere where I've never been before. So I'm bringing the tools that I'm comfortable with, mm -hmm. the colors that I'm familiar with, the mediums that I'm familiar with. So um, obviously bringing it into a 3D space and dealing with, like, bro, I, I use Photoshop and all that type of stuff all the time. So um, familiar with, you know, technology yeah. in that way and, you know, building visual landscapes and stuff like that. But this is like, yeah, this is on a whole other level. There's There's a lot of things that can be done uh, yeah. with this for sure just to jump in there the interesting thing is uh sometime this week i just realized that there are images that you can port into tilt brush oh, okay. uh, for example so um i know i work with photoshop as well too and uh, sometimes i photoshop a lot of images together to create something else mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that is also something that you can do in virtual reality so let's say you wanted to do a painting of um uh De La Soul, for yeah. example, okay, okay? <laughs> and you can't remember what all their faces look like. You can take a an image of that, port it into VR, so you have a point of reference where you can paint that in virtual reality too. Wow, so. wow, 
Yes, pretty cool. Yeah. I'm interested to know um, um, because um, Remco, this was your first time trying uh, the tilt brush as well too. Um, what was your feedback in regards to that? Like, how was that experience? Is there anything that you find, um, you know, questionable as an art expression or a potential for something else that could grow from it? Yeah, it was totally fascinating. Yeah. Um, and what one of the first things just that came to mind uh, when trying it is that while it uses the language and the tools of illustration and mm. painting, um, your mindset is almost has to be that of sculpture. Sculpture. Mm -hmm. uh, Most and yeah. have to think in, in actual spatial uh, relationships yes. uh, rather than so it's interesting how and I, I think you see that often in new technologies where first it's trying to mimic something yes that it mm. draws from but it's actually a whole different and uh, then picks up a life of its level own. yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, almost as a transitional period where you have to m make that step from those yeah um, similar to how initially in uh, computers and on the internet uh, people treated it as if it was a page, mm -hmm, uh, yeah. even though it was an infinite oh, right. uh, That's true. Uh, yeah. canvas, or going from analog editing to uh, digital. digital editing. Um, so it's really it's it's fascinating, and uh, uh, and these type of technologies, artists are perfectly positioned to take advantage of the potential of these things and yeah. really push it immediately. Uh, it was fantastic to watch Dom already immediately as an artist knowing mm -hmm. the effects to create with the, the the width of the brush or the specific yeah. uh, effects that he wanted to create and immediately wanting to do that in a similar way as he would uh, decide whether to use a brush or a pen in his uh, in his mural work uh, yeah. so that was actually sorry that yeah that was actually a really interesting thing was actually like uh, like the in like the intuitiveness of it is actually really easy like hey oh, i'm gonna make the brush smaller i'm gonna you know it's like i'm taking another brush taking a smaller brush bigger brush but just using like already knowing how to manipulate these tools so so easily yeah um within like two minutes you know like you get the hang of it really easy i don't know if that's just like maybe growing up with technology or yeah or it's just or it's just made that well that it's just like makes it in like an easy transition mm -hmm. right yeah um just to jump in here one thing that uh i found very attractive with tilt brush specifically mm -hmm. has been um, the idea of not having to um, you know dip my brushes in water what that means right, is like right. when I when I do life painting um, sometimes it's um, so when I'm doing like life painting and poetry what happens is that there's usually a break in the conversation or a break in the performance to like bend down put my head my brushes in the water mm -hmm. make sure it's okay bring it back up but with tilt brush everything is all in one paddle so changing colors is very fast you know the expression is a little bit faster as well too and of course you're working in, in a 3d space mm -hmm. so yeah it's exciting mm -hmm. i'm gonna i'm gonna transition a little bit and just ask you know chris you were here hanging out with us and of course you know it's one thing to to know some of these artists personally mm -hmm. but what what is your feedback and just witnessing you know these artists step into the vr or the experience of somebody stepping in for the first time any feedback in that sense it's very exciting because technology and music for me are very synonymous. So to see technology with visual arts is really a new dynamic. Um, and I think it's very exciting to have such uh, expertise in our community because it gives us new opportunities for the artists to have more connections and more opportunities. And that's really what Hus Paint is all about, is to, um, really moving with the times and as um, technology evolves, we really need to figure out how we can best leverage those dynamics to mm. be more visible, but to also inspire right. and to inspire beyond the borders of our community, to inspire internationally. I mean, it's amazing. You can contact anybody in the world and make music. And I feel like there's more opportunity now for collaborative visual artists through mm. technology. Nice. And that's what really interests me. Nice. But I have to say, seeing all our like Hesapane artists in the evolving interior mural is very exciting because it just shows everybody's peace and contribution and then to see how that translates on tech is like another really engaging experience for people that can't be here physically right very cool and i'm curious remco uh you know coming coming from art engine what might be some of the 
uh, initial thoughts about applications of something like tilt brush or something like VR transitioning into the tech world and the art of expression. Any feedback on that? It will be interesting to see how it, uh, I think it's currently still in the stage of, um, of sort of tentatively feeling out what, what it's able to do. Um, and to a degree, um, translating, uh, let's say, real life work into a, into a virtual uh, space. Um, and of course, that type of work can never have the visceral experience that, uh, that Chris just talked about, uh, actually seeing it and mm -hmm. feeling, seeing the textures right. right in front of you. Um, but uh, that being said, uh, again, artists are also uniquely positioned to then push that through that initial barrier and come up with new forms of expression. Um, let's take an example in terms of uh, uh, 3D printing, for instance, as another new digital uh, technology where uh, you can still make, let's say, earrings with them and you can do it faster than if you do it by hand, but it doesn't produce new or uh, more interesting forms that way. And it's only when you go beyond that initial application mm -hmm. that you start to see things that can uniquely be done with that particular tool. And I think that's what something like Tiltbrush will, uh, we can't predict it right now, but mm -hmm. that's exactly what, what artists using this technology will be able to do. Yeah, fantastic. You know, I find that in Ottawa, there's a lot of uh, interest in innovation and, uh, you know, developing new things and stuff. And I know at, en at uh, Art Engine, you have, um, a program that you've been running called Mod Lab. I don't know if you would mind sharing that with our uh, listeners mm -hmm. about what that is and how they can get involved, if they can get involved, and uh, the goals that you're trying to achieve with that. Yeah, Mod Lab um, um, originated as um, an, a platform to bring uh, creatives and technologists together in one space. Mm -hmm. um, so they were, uh, let's say, open lab nights where anybody with uh, either coming from the, the engineering and technology side uh, could meet up with people who are coming more from the arts and design side, uh, discuss their projects, uh, develop new projects on the spot. And it was really um, meant as, a, as an open-ended way to develop the idea of creative technology and what it could lead to. Um, and currently, as I said, we're in the in the midst of a construction period. So the mod lab, as a as an open uh, uh, meeting group, uh, has uh, been on hold for a little bit. But uh, once we reopen, we'll definitely continue with that. Because that meeting, uh, oddly, since we're talking about uh, virtual reality, but meeting people meeting yeah. together is yeah. where the where the magic happens. That's true. That's true because uh, because a lot of all this technology is in the development stages. I think it's it's cool that the conversation happens between artists and technologists because the people developing the apps and stuff uh, need to know what people are looking for in it. You know, like with Tilt Brush, you can already sort of think of ways that you would want maybe a different kind of like blending tool or something that could be worked into it. And sometimes uh, artists contributing to that conversation really helps. So that's a that's a wonderful idea, and I'm glad that you've created that space for for things like that to happen. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, one of the things that's kind of touching my mind right now is exploring the uh, options or even the uh, I guess challenges around showcasing the art that might be in a VR. You know, it's kind mm -hmm. of in that digital mm -hmm. space. So. Yeah. I don't know what your guys' reflections are in the sense of how would you showcase that to a public audience? Is that is that a pro or a con? I mean, Chris, by all means, if okay, you want to jump so in. The three D printing yes um, dynamic technology is totally fascinating to me, and I think that is really the opportunity to get a tangible art piece at a festival, at an event, after somebody designs it on the spot. That's right. Because you feel like you're part of the creative process, and then you get to take a piece home with you. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a new. Um, artistic experience. We go to shows, we see people perform, right. we see them perform, we want to take it home. Like yes. that's oh, that almost is. nine times out of ten, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So I feel like the 3D printing gives us that kind of opportunity with visual mm -hmm. art. Yeah, we're just waiting for the technology mm -hmm. to, to, to step up a bit Great. because 3D printing takes a long time. Yeah, that's you know? exactly what I was thinking. Don't be waiting a minute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But this is a few minutes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. See, 
Uh, uh, what, one thing that we've uh, because yeah. part of the this whole workshop that we're doing today mm -hmm. was how we can take one expression, mm -hmm. convert it from the virtual space into something physical. So we're going to mm -hmm. be printing out what we're doing Beautiful. today as a 3D model. Yeah. But the advantage is that we are or something that we're looking to do at Made Mill because we have access mm -hmm. to a lot of 3D printers is find a way that we can be printing a lot of these things at the same time. So at an event when someone does a live painting or something, it can already start. You have like six or seven different printers printing 10 different of that same model so that people can take mm -hmm. it away when they go mm -hmm. you know it's uh i think it's amazing that art can be transformed from a virtual space mm -hmm. to something physical because i think something mm -hmm. tangible in your hand is you know you remember it it has um what's the word i'll say uh, sentimental value mm. <laughs> absolutely that's interesting to consider then what um what is the what is the work what right? is the is work the, is the work mm -hmm. the is the the print however mm -hmm. you do mm -hmm. it is that sort of a reproduction of the actual work, work or is the is the print eventually the work and mm -hmm. the and sort of your creation right. the in between phase yeah. and maybe those categories of what is the multiple and what is the original are, are no, no longer, longer going to be that's really interesting relevant yeah, yeah. the simulacra concept is that sort of what you're getting mm -hmm. at that's that this this is a whole other podcast. Elaborate, no, elaborate, <laughs> yeah. please. Well, you have what you create on paper. So Dom is very, uh, he's a visionary. He, he draws before he paints, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's a, a design or, or a mural concept. So you look at both pieces and both pieces are artwork, right? But then you look at the eventual possibility of printing a tree house, such mm -hmm. as the one um, that your listeners will see on social media feeds. Um, but ultimately we could print this in a 3D model eventually. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So which one is the original mm -hmm. oh, right. concept? That's a really, yeah. really fascinating question. Right. Yeah. I think that was one of the things uh, Dom actually mentioned. He's like, you know, it's really cool. If, if I could go in it again, I probably would build a building of some sort mm. and explore that. What was, what was your, your thought process around that? Well, that sort of just made me feel like when you can actually put your hand in and and go behind the line that you just that you just mm -hmm. drew so that just made me immediately go to like case okay, structures would be the most i like the funnest maybe the most uh the best way to use this technology is that you can create you can create landscapes like yeah. the that, that's that's just where my mind went today and maybe my head's there because i'm yeah. painted a treehouse on the wall <laughs> so i don't know that's um, interesting but interesting on the treehouse topic i mean if you're in a vr and there are 3d printers that are large enough you could literally print something to the size where you know a child could almost put it up and right, play in right, it. i yeah. mean fisher even price is gonna grab one. <laughs> seriously yeah. yeah the material is almost at a point where it's strong enough in some cases there very much are they can handle the weight mm -hmm. so i think it's it's interesting how this conversation goes from an artistic expression to what's the capacity of taking it out of that VR mm. and where it can go um, I feel like one of the m maybe limitations with 3D printing is you don't get all of the colors and the strokes it kind of starts to limit in the sense of what gets printed and that's mm -hmm. just based on what how 3D printers print that's right, right. Yeah. so I think it's also exciting to kind of see what those limitations or what yeah. those um, you know capacities might be in but just, just to bounce off of what you were yeah. saying in terms of uh, strokes and stuff like that you know um just yesterday uh we were doing some uh, training on the tinkering printers that we have right now that's from a company out in vancouver and uh, there's something interesting that they have in their system that allows you to change the filament while you print what that means is that you can now create uh, a multicolored sort of 3D print because majority of the 3D prints we've been seeing around are all mm -hmm. one color, you mm -hmm. know, because we use one filament for that. But now we have the possibility of mixing different colors. So, you know, we're not quite as far as we would like to go in terms of, um, you know, taking something that is a, a painting and making it 3D. But at, at least that is a, a step closer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll I'll. Uh, let you. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm trying to f remember the exact company, and it yeah. escapes me. But um, they uh, recently got into a collaboration with the National Art Gallery, where their scanners are so accurate that it actually does pick up the brush strokes and the, the thickness of the paint on the canvas. So they scan a painting and then print it in i would say two and a half d if you <laughs> if you will uh, but the the actual 
brush layers strokes. of paint and brush strokes are are visible in that so. uh, print and then you get into this the, sort of the uncanny valley of art where it is mm. a more exact reproduction of the original mm. artwork than the original than for instance a print <laughs> yeah. but um, uh, at the same time it is also far further removed almost from the yeah. original artwork than uh, so they 3d prints the painting yeah. pretty much Wow, well, I think he, w he was he was also elaborating is there are 3D scanners, right? Yeah. So there's scanners that you can have that can scan an object and really get a lot of the detail. And then mm -hmm. I guess that next level would then be being able to print something like that and get further detail. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it sounds like, you know, a combination of something that's sketched or painted in 2D, you know, maybe scanned into a 3D concept mm -hmm. and then taken to that next level. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're going from a concept or a thought or an artistic expression in the mind and literally Really bringing it to life and into reality and I find that the most fascinating about this conversation mm -hmm. yeah yeah well, guys, I think we're going to wrap that up. I mean, we, we can continue to have this conversation, I'm sure, all evening. Uh, we really appreciate all your guys' time, your insights, and your input. And uh, thank you very much, and welcome to Made Mail. Yeah. Yes. Uh, just before we go, I'll just say thank you once again to uh, Dom Laporte for coming and contributing to this <laughs> wall. Like, what he has done in this wall is amazing, and I'm looking forward to uh, Kalkadana Sifa, who will be joining us next time and continuing what Dom has uh, started. And thank you very much, uh, Remco Vollmer for, for being here. Uh, we appreciate the work you're doing at Art Engine and we hope we can continue to work together and be supportive. All right, and thank you very much. House of Paint hey. in, in the, the house. house. <laughs> and uh, yeah, looking forward to the summer because I know the summer is when it comes live. Stay yeah. tuned. Yes. Social media, you got all the deets from everybody. That's right. All right. Thank you Have so a nice much. Saturday. Thanks for having me. Later. Thanks. All right. Welcome to Made Mill. Made Mill is funded in part by generous contributions by the Fed Dev Ontario program, the City of Ottawa, and the Government of Ontario.